uh, today to talk a little bit about the coalition, what we do, and how we educate policymakers around the world. Let's see. So, so quickly, just our mission at the Open Ram Policy Coalition represent a diverse group of companies that are formed to promote policies that will advance the adoption of open and interoperable solutions in the RAN as a means to create innovation, spur competition, and expand the supply chain for advanced uh, wireless technologies. Um, and, and our coalition is actually made up of a diverse group of information and communication technology companies that all have a, a common goal of breaking down technological and market barriers to promote varied and competitive wireless market and create a future in which radio access networking and architecture is based on a more modular design with open and interoperable um, interfaces. So our, to date, we've we, uh, launched the coalition in May of 2020, just as COVID was hitting us all. Um, and we're able to create a global organization. We have 57 members from 11 different countries. Um, if you are interested in learning more about the coalition, please reach out to me. We can get my email from the organizers or you can find me on LinkedIn and I'm happy to tell you more about it. So our role in the ecosystem, I know you're hearing from my colleagues at these organizations um, in this session as well, is ORAN Alliance focuses on the standards, a discussion, um, telecom infra project tip focuses more on the engineering aspects. How do we get all the pieces to work together? And so at the Open RAN Policy Coalition, when we formed, we really saw a vacuum in the policy space. There was a lot of interest at the time domestically here in the United States, but certainly that grew globally as well. Um, members of Congress, the White House looking to looking for ways to promote open RAN. And so that's when we came together originally as a, a loosely held organization um, and then formed into a, an association, a global association that thought to discuss these issues. I look forward to kind of getting into um, how we approach policymakers and how we work with them. Um, so our coalition is actually as I mentioned, we span the entire mobile ecosystem, it includes carriers, vendors, cybersecurity providers, tower operators, cloud innovate, innovators, startups, <clears throat> and legacy tech companies um, that have all come together because they all understand that the health of the entire ecosystem is truly reliant on secure and robust supply chain. So government support for Open RAN has um, developed over time in, in multiple different ways. Individual companies have put out support, uh, verbal support, um, tax, Japan has done tax incentives, the United States has done um, direct grant programs both domestically in the United States as well as internationally. Uh, so we, we work with governments to figure out what makes most sense for the ecosystem, for their operators locally, and then just try to provide the best advice that we can um, to, to, for them to, uh, to help also introduce new policy points. Um, we also work through multilateral organizations. Um, one of the things that we do uh, most frequently at the moment is working through the Quad, which is the US, Japan, um, India, and Australia. Um, and we have been doing for the past year and a half, a set of dialogues around a handful of different issues. Um, I was actually, I was recently in the Philippines and prior a month ago and prior to being in the Philippines, I was in Japan for a conference where it was the first time that we really opened it up beyond the quad nations. Um, so I look forward to taking the lessons learned that we've had from working with between the four governments and kind of expanding our breadth and bringing in new countries into the mix. And so for that session, we focused on um, international assistance programs, try to brainstorm what international assist assistance programs exist around the world um, and how companies can best um, access these programs in order to build out um, global networks. So how can governments advance? Um, so what we created shortly after we launched is our Open RAN Policy Roadmap. Understanding different countries, different jurisdictions have um, 
different different pain points, different areas that they focus on, whether you're from an area that is a, a light regulatory touch, or you may take a more um, macro approach to regulation in country. We wanted to create something that, that would give a, not only the government, but local operators um, ideas and suggestions on how they could for the fiscal stimulate supply, stimulate demand, uh, regulatory, um, regulatory maneuvers that may um, happen to the deployment of open RAN uh, and then convening, which I, I like to say is one of the most important aspects of what we do. A government can be a great convener, uh, similar to what we're seeing today when you're able to bring so many different people on within so many different organizations together to share information, ideas, um, it really lends itself to getting people to better understand and getting people more educated on open RAN um, and that to have have colleagues that are able to answer questions. And so everyone feels that they are properly um, educated and can make decisions and invest move forward. So this is just an example of some work we've done for India. Um, I wanted to show you how we're able to kind of hone in on an individual uh, country and to better understand their system, their government system, and then make suggestions on how um, they can best move forward on adopting open RAN. And so we've been working very closely with India um, most recently, I would say over the past year, they do participate in the quad. Uh, and then we were, we'd had a conference, our first actually in-person conference in India in October. So it was an excellent opportunity to get on the ground, to meet people, be able to answer questions, um, and then kind of see how uh, increasing connectivity in India is, is transforming um, that population. And then when we speak with governments, um, kind of some of the things that we suggest is, you know, when they're having conversations with their local vendors and local population, um, just a focus on, you know, what, what are your goals in moving towards open RAN? Is it lower costs? Is it closing the digital divide? Diversifying your vendor base, removing untrusted vendors. I think it's important to get an understanding of where people's interests lie. I know it helps us better how to figure out a good program in order to um, in order to, the, to get them thinking about different policies that would be helpful or whether it's conferences, bringing together experts that can answer questions. Um, it's also important to learn about the goals and challenges of, of network operators, life cycles, what are the barriers to expanding access in regulatory and financial burdens, um, spectrum au auction cycles is also really important. Understand that uh, spectrum is the main driver in everything that we do in wireless telecommunications. Um, and then just developing that strategy with our international partners, outlining where things stand today and the desired end state and how government activity can support private sector efforts and what domestic or international resources can be leveraged um, in, in showing that, that the networks are, are being deployed. So that is it for my slide deck. Let's see, I'll stop, stop share. Let me come back on. Still can't do the camera. Sorry about that. I, I even have a, a suit on at 11.30 at night, I promise. <laughs> um, you know, just... I, again, um, in order to promote this technical, technological um, evolution and accelerate a stable and successful transition to 5G and beyond, um, you know, we believe that government initiatives and policies um, must support new and existing technology suppliers, as well as small and large network operators, offering open and interoperable RAN solutions, as well as integration of those open components that we need to create a competitive global ecosystem of diverse trusted suppliers um, in, in service operations. It's not about one country, it's about how we can lift the entire ecosystem um, to, to better move forward on all of these initiatives and all of these goals. Um, and then encourage building and maintaining, investing in technological leadership globally for the development of 5G in future wireless networks. 
Um, I, I would just say in closing, the world is at a critical junction and the issues that we're discussing today um, are no longer retain only to telecom policy, but this is about economic policy and economic security. And as we move to the, I, I like to say the digitization of everything, um, mobile networks are the lifeblood of our ecosystem. Ensuring a healthy supply chain is incredibly important in working with um, working with countries like the Philippines is, is important to us. So I look forward to starting this conversation today and figuring out ways how I can um, work with you more closely and, and to continue down this path of open brand.